Hello Sigmas! Today we shall look into this very powerful theorem in mechanics known as the parallel axis theorem which is going to help us in finding out the moment of inertia of some random body about some random axis. And to understand what makes this theorem so very powerful, let me quickly first tell you what the theorem actually is and then later we shall prove the theorem. So if we want to find the moment of inertia of this random body, right, this is some random body which I have assumed here, about some axis, right, some axis of rotation. So let me quickly say that this is the axis of rotation which uh, I am orienting along the z axis. So this is my axis of rotation. And if I want to find the moment of inertia of this random body about the axis of rotation, which I shall call I, then the parallel axis theorem is going to help us in doing just that. What the parallel axis theorem tells us is that the moment of inertia of this body about this axis, which I have chosen randomly, which is I, is equal to I naught plus M L squared, where I naught is the moment of inertia of this body about an axis which passes through the center of mass and is parallel to the axis of rotation. In the figure, you can see that that axis is denoted with the dashed line. So this is the center of mass of the body and this is our axis of rotation which is uh, shown in dashed lines. That is our axis of rotation which uh, passes through the center of mass and the moment of inertia about that axis of rotation is what we are calling I naught. So I naught is the moment of inertia of the body about an axis which passes through the center of mass and is parallel to our axis of rotation. So this dashed line is actually parallel. This dashed line is uh, parallel to the axis of rotation. And uh, if we know the moment of inertia about such an axis which passes through the center of mass and is parallel to the axis of rotation, then we shall call it I naught. And I will be equal to I naught plus M L squared. Here M is the total mass of the body. Here M is the total mass of the body and L is the distance of between the two axes right here you can see that this is the distance between these two axes and hence that is our L. L is the distance of between the axes about which we want to find our uh, moment of inertia and the axis which passes through the center of mass and is parallel to the axis of rotation. So now since we know what the parallel axis theorem is, let me quickly prove it to you that this theorem is actually works or is actually true. So here I'm going to prove this theorem too. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to assume some elemental mass uh, which uh, this uh, body is uh, made up of. So for example, it could be an electron or a proton, but some very small mass which makes up this uh, continuous body. And what I'm going to say is that the distance of that mass from our axis of rotation, I'm going to call it rho g. So I'm going to call the distance of that mass from our axis of rotation, which is oriented along the z-axis as rho g. Now, if you're wondering that uh, I had told you that I'm going to assume an uh, arbitrary axis and here I have oriented the axis along the z-axis, then uh, how is the axis random? Right here I have chosen a particular axis which is the z-axis. Well, that means you have not watched my previous video because I have made it very clear that the choice of axis is completely our choice, right? We can choose to orient the coordinate system in any manner that we want to. And here what I've done is I've oriented the z-axis along the axis of rotation. Notice that the axis of rotation is still random. All I have done is I have chosen a coordinate system according to our convenience. And this is going to be a very, very important part in our 
journey of a physics. The choice of a coordinate system is very, very important. The proper choice of coordinate system is very, very important. So if MJ is located at a distance of rho j from the axis of rotation, then what I can assume is that the coordinates of MJ is some x and y or xj and yj. So here rho j would be equal to xj x cap plus yj y cap right this is my rho j vector and uh, let us say that the center of mark is uh, located at some distance r perpendicular perpendicular because we are considering the perpendicular distance of the center of mass from the z axis here you can uh, see that r perpendicular is uh, over here right this is r perpendicular so r perpendicular is equal to let us say some x times x cap plus some y times y cap, right? This is the vector r perpendicular, the distance of the center of mass from the z axis. And then what we are going to do is we are going to assume another vector, which is the vector rho j, as you can see here. This is the vector rho j prime, right? Rho j we had already, which is the distance of that elementary mass from the z axis or r axis of rotation. And next we have rho j prime. And rho j prime is nothing but the distance of that elemental mass from the axis of rotation which passes through the center of mass and is parallel to the axis of rotation, right? The axis of rotation about which we want to find the moment of inertia of the body. So it is parallel to that and it passes through the center of mass. And this rho j prime is the distance of the elemental mass from that axis, the axis about which the moment of inertia is I know. So rho j prime, which is a vector, would be equal to, as you can see from here, rho j prime plus r perpendicular is going to be equal to rho j. If you look carefully uh, this figure, then you can see that this uh, these vectors, uh, rho j, rho j prime, and the vector r perpendicular, they form a triangle. Let me quickly draw it somewhere else. Right, so can you can understand it? So this is our vector uh, r perpendicular over there, right? r perpendicular. This is the vector rho j prime, and this is the vector rho j, right? You can see that they are forming a triangle over there, right? If you just parallel transported all the vectors, right, to form a common triangle, that is what you are going to do is you are going to shift the tail of rho j prime to the head of uh, r perpendicular and then you are going to shift the tail of uh, rho j to the tail of uh, r perpendicular right what you are going to do is you are going to shift the tail of rho j prime to the head of r perpendicular and you are going to shift the tail of uh, rho j to the tail of uh, r perpendicular and then they will form a triangle as you can see from the figure a triangle that looks like that and uh, then with the help of triangle law or vector addition we can write this that rho j prime plus uh, r perpendicular is equal to rho j now from my previous video on uh, the moment of inertia we know that the moment of inertia of the body about uh, the axis of rotation that we have assumed so the z axis is going to be equal to summation mj into rho j squared this is something that we looked into in my previous video and hence in a similar fashion I naught, which is the moment of inertia of uh, that body about the axis which passes through the center of mass and is parallel to our axis of rotation, is going to be equal to summation of mj into rho j prime square. Right, and this is the moment of inertia of the body about the center of mass. Then now what we can do is we can write I is equal to from this, right, let me call it uh, equation number one and equation number two. 
then I can write equation number one as uh, I equal to summation mj and let me call this equation over here as equation number three. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put equation number three into equation number one. Here we have rho j and here also we have rho j. So I'm just going to substitute uh, rho j from equation number three into equation number one. And that would give me rho j is equal to rho j prime plus are perpendicular the whole square. That is what a rho j was, right? Look at equation number three. Rho j was equal to rho j prime plus r perpendicular. And these are vectors. So now what I can do is I can open up the bracket. I can square the terms. So I will get summation mj rho j squared plus r perpendicular squared plus uh, 2 times uh, rho j into r perpendicular into cos theta. But uh, let us not put cos theta, let us keep it in the form of the dot product. And uh, there were primes over here because uh, this is uh, rho j prime. Now let us uh, deal with this equation term by term. So first I am going to look at the last term. So you will see that the last term corresponds to summation mj into rho j prime dot r perpendicular. Now I can take r perpendicular out of uh, the summation symbol because it is independent of uh, j and the sum is over j. So I can take r perpendicular out of the summation and I will be left with a summation of mj into rho j prime. Now what is this summation mj into rho j prime? That is equal to r perpendicular summation. Again, we can use our equation number 3. So if I use equation number 3, you can see that rho j prime is equal to rho j minus r perpendicular. Rho j prime is equal to rho j minus r perpendicular. So this will give me r perpendicular times uh, summation of uh, mj rho j minus, again r perpendicular is constant, will come out of the summation, summation of mj. So this will give me r perpendicular. What is this summation mj into rho j? That is just the center of mass of the body, right? Or you can say that is the mass of the body times the center of mass of the body. This is m into r perpendicular because r perpendicular is our location of the center of mass. So this is nothing but uh, the center of mass of the body, m times the center of mass of the body minus r perpendicular and summation of m. The summation of mj is capital M and this just gives us zero. And hence you can see that the last term in this equation, this term is zero. And we are left only with these two terms. So let us quickly write it down. So i is equal to now summation of uh, mj into rho j prime squared. So summation of mj into rho j prime squared plus I will get r perpendicular will come out of the sum again, summation of mj. Now what is this? I have already told you what that is. It is I naught, the moment of inertia of the body about the axis which passes through the center of mass and is parallel to the axis of rotation. That is I naught. So I is equal to I naught plus this is again capital M, the total mass of the body into R perpendicular. And what is R perpendicular? Remember what was L or capital L was nothing but the distance between the two axes, the axis about which we want to find the moment of inertia and the axis passing through the center of mass and parallel to the axis about which I want to find the moment of inertia. So L was the distance between them and that is exactly what R perpendicular is. R perpendicular is the distance between the Z axis and the center of mass. So it is obviously equal to L, the parallel distance since both axes are uh, parallel, the distance between them is going to remain the same whether you consider it over here or over there. So R perpendicular, if you look closely into the diagram, is nothing but capital L, right? The perpendicular distance between the two axes. And hence, we have proved our parallel axis theorem that I is equal to I naught plus M into L squared. This is our parallel axis theorem. And as we are going to soon find out in the future videos, when we try to find out the moment of inertia of various bodies about the various axes, this theorem will help you in finding out the moment of inertia of any 
random body about any random axis which is parallel to the axis of passing through the center of Mars. And that is exactly what is going to make this theorem so very powerful. For now, this was the parallel axis theorem. If you enjoyed the video, do not forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video. I will see you in the next video with more such interesting concepts in physics. Thanks for watching. Yeah.